The 88th Oscars are now in the books, and what an Oscars it was. There were many surprises, some interesting snubs, and some big time headlines. To kick things off, Eric, Leo has finally been given his golden statuette. That is correct, Anthony. Leonardo DiCaprio finally has his Oscar. Six times a charm for Leo, having won best Oscar for his role as Hugh Glass in The Revenant. <laughs> Hand of. Handouts aside, Brandon, I think uh, he didn't really win, I, I think, for The Revenant. Um, he was writhing and screaming and just being tossed around by a bear most of the time. I don't want to give away too much, but yeah. I thought it was a great physical performance and just an encompassing performance, but uh, I think it was more just kind of like this lifetime achievement well, type yeah. of award. And that's what we were kind of saying on last week's show, too. Yeah. It's, it kind of maybe, if he were to win it, maybe it is a little bit of that lifetime-esque kind of award. Yep. But Brandon, you did not like the award. Why not? Uh, because it's not, it's not best actor for a lifetime award. It's best actor for that uh, certain yeah. movie, that group of movies with th those group of actors. Um, I didn't watch The Revenant, so I can't say much about Leo's performance. I did see Steve Jobs, and Michael Fassbender sure as hell did deserve that. Um, I mean, I think it was between those two guys, as far as what I had read, it was between those two guys. Most people had picked Fassbender just because he was better in that movie. Um, and a lot of people saying, well, Leo won an Oscar for his fourth or fifth best movie he's ever done. Yeah. So to me, more of a handout just because I think there was someone else better um, what, than what, him. what Leonardo this, DiCaprio performance would you have rather seen him win for? I know my answer. I mean, a, a couple other movies. I mean, he's done, he's done great in, in a bunch of movies, but the thing is, is that doesn't matter at this point in this Oscar in in, in this in this award specifically yeah. that doesn't matter. It's like it's like giving Peyton Manning the, the MVP from uh, last season because <laughs> exactly that's what's or for the Super Bowl mm -hmm. because he he's Peyton Manning and he it's been a while since he he's won a Super Bowl and this was for him or or whatever. It just felt like Kobe Bryant getting MVP for the All-Star game yeah. or something yeah. like that. It's not, it, it just didn't seem like he really deserved this one. Even though he deserved it before, he didn't necessarily deserve this one over a couple of others. Yeah, well, I'm flipped. I saw The Revenant. I haven't, I didn't get to see Steve Jobs, but um, two movies in my mind that uh, were better roles in The Revenant was Catch Me If You Can and Gangs of New York, actually, one that a lot of people don't talk about. Inception is up there, but I think The Revenant role was a little bit better, but I, I, Gangs of New York and Catch Me If You Can definitely, I yeah. think, were Oscar worthy for me, mm -hmm. um, especially with Gangs of New York um, with his role there. Um, but again, it feels a little Lifetime-esque, but at the same time, the Revenant, it was, it was a fantastic role. Yep. It's just with Leo, and we're talking about a guy that's it's crazy to think about, a guy that hasn't won a lot, of, hasn't won Oscars up to this point, no. that he should have had a couple up to this point. This one probably wasn't that one that he would have won if he were to be a winner going into this. Yeah, I don't think, uh, if, you're right. I think you break out from an interesting point that if he was a previous winner of an Academy Award, yeah, he wouldn't win for this one. So I think uh, just kind of the stipulations the, that were already there prior to this Academy Award season um, really helped Leo in his favor. And to, to your point, yeah, Gangs in New York was amazing. Uh, I thought uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape he was amazing in. Um, Johnny Depp was kind of, I thought, I thought he overshadowed Johnny Depp's performance in that one. And then as far as uh, uh, his performance in The Aviator as Howard Hughes, I thought that for sure he would win. Uh, he would have won, so. Um, but good for Leo. Uh, I'm glad for Leo, and I'm, I'm glad that he's finally getting the, I guess, the Academy's recognition. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really need an award. I was hoping, actually, for an inside joke where it's like, he will never win one, you know? He will never win one. Um, I, I was hoping for that in a certain kind of mindset, but... So you so. said you said Fassbender. Is there any, was there any other opposition that really should oh, have been in contention Brian for it? Cranston, yeah, there Cranston. Was, yeah, there, there was a couple trouble. others. I think if, if this was voted... So solely on, on just these movies and, and just their performance in these movies, I think Leo would have been the third or fourth. Wow. I mean, it's just from what I had read from some of the movies that I had seen, mm -hmm. he just, and like, I didn't see The Revenant. So mm -hmm. my, point of, my point of view isn't as strong as you But you can still have that have opinion that if it was Lifetime Esque, you can I still say. I did see say. Steve Jobs. Okay. You know, I did yeah. see a couple of these other movies, and, and they were that good to where the whole time I was watching Steve Jobs, it just, every second that went by, I was like, he's, he's winning 
he's a winning best actor. Yeah. Hands down, yeah. not even close. And Fassbender, to his credit, I, I, I agree, is that um, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. I still think, too, though, he has a little bit more, um, more time left on his career. But see, but at the, at, at the, at Leo, but he's that, that at still the doesn't, it's still not an excuse. It doesn't, exactly, yeah. it's yeah. not an excuse because yeah. we're, not, we're not looking at, you know, it's, it's like not giving Cam Newton an MVP and giving it to Brady. Oh, because Brady's about to retire here in four yeah, years. Exactly. Yeah, and argument, Cam yeah. has a whole career. <laughs> <Okay>. So, <laughs> using a lot of sports analogies, but it's, it's, okay. it's very, yeah. you know, it's, it's a similar thing because you don't just give someone an award because of what he's done before. You, you give him more because of what he's done for that award, yeah. and he didn't deserve it compared um, to others. I mean, I think they were all very deserving. I don't think Matt Damon really had a chance, unfortunately. Uh, Eddie Redmayne could have gone double, doubled up, um, much like Henry too. But for the most part, I thought it was between Fassbender, DiCaprio, and too bad Brian Cranston as Dalton Trumbull, which I thought the movie itself um, probably didn't uh, play out so right politically with um, the majority of Hollywood. Um, as it did kind of attack some of the bigger production studios sure. um, for you know these blacklisted writers, but uh, content aside, he was Dalton Trumbo, and uh, I did see Steve Jobs. Michael Fassbender was Steve Jobs. Yeah, so and those um, are two I have to see. I still I didn't, I didn't, I got to, didn't get a chance. I didn't to see agree Jobs with it, but I definitely saw it happen. Okay, I saw it happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, even yeah, though he shouldn't have, and I'm with you, shouldn't have gotten if it was more lifetime award. But Reverend. for Leo to have one, I think, even though it shouldn't be that way, mm -hmm. lifetime was. It's nice to have see him have one because that guy's a phenomenal actor, one of the best actors yeah. out there. Yeah. But to your point, I'm with you guys. It shouldn't have been Lifetime Award. It should be for your role in a movie, year to year. It's that role, nothing else. But unfortunately, just make a Hall of Fame and throw him in there. There you go, <laughs> yo, Hollywood Hall of Fame. Yeah. I know there's a Walk of Fame, but Hall of Fame. Let's make it happen. I mean, yeah. Walk of yeah. Fame's good enough though. They probably already have a Hollywood Hall of Fame. Probably. We just don't know. It's called it's the probably... Wax Museum. <laughs> there you go. It's in the middle of Indiana. And I think somewhere. Leo's already yes. locked in there. The last time I think I've been there. All right. Well, up next on our Oscars recap, Brandon Mad Max took home a whole lot of hardware. Break it down to us. Yeah, they won a lot. Actually, uh, in most of the words that we thought that Star Wars would win. Yeah. Actually, Mad Max won. Um, they won in total six Oscars. Uh, are you guys surprised? I mean, I'm surprised by this, just because of the, of some of the awards that they won. Um, you know, there was, there was a couple of other movies that may have deserved a little bit more. Um, and we've ta we talked about it last week. Mad Max. The more we saw it, the less we liked it. So the are less you guys surprised. Well, for me, the more I saw it, the less I liked the story. Okay. And, and the story kind of broke down. But everything else, the things that it did win, were phenomenal. Yeah. The costume. The makeup, the things that now the things that caught our surprise was the sound, yep. the sound editing the, because they won mixing and editing, did it not? They yep. won um, best costume design, production design, makeup and hairstyling, yeah. film editing, and both sound mixing and editing. Um, I'm not surprised that the Star guitar Wars, guy, I, man. We talked about him last week. That guitar guy <laughs> got into it. I'm really not surprised that Star Wars didn't come away with any awards. Um, Visual effects, I am. Uh, sound Max one, of, was one amazing, of the though. one of the sound editing or mixing because I think the is, mixing. It is judging mixing, by my yeah. my understandings of the definition. I think the mixing was yeah. more so, but neither again. I was I was very surprised I didn't get. I expected them to get one, and it was one of the sound. Uh, awards. Um, I was pretty shocked that Mad Max. Mad Max got both of those, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually, I don't think that's common where the same movie gets both of those because I do think they're very different. Um, I can't really explain it, but they are different. So I was surprised that they got both and not Star Wars getting yeah. one of those. Well, going into it, as we said last week in our in our predictions, we kind of knew going in visually, and then obviously now we see sound. Mm -hmm. We, I thought Mad Max was really going to clean up by judging by our predictions. We were right yeah. for the most part. We'll get more into the other uh, things next, uh, next segment here. Obviously, knowing that Mad Max didn't win Best Picture, that's kind of what we saw. Yeah. Everything really but Best Picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We thought that's what we were kind of going to go on. But Mad Max visually was just incredible. I mean, all the, all the, all the creation they did, the, all the, 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 par the practical effects, um, the makeup and hair sign was insane. The costumes were yeah. absolutely phenomenal. So the awards that it won, I mean, it was in terms of that department, visually, now sound, um, all the all the stuff they did, it was it was incredible. Yeah. At the very least, it's just obviously, as we said on on last week's show, it's the story that eventually you watch more and more, it gets a little bit lost. I think everything the, but everything but the story. I think this is more of a response of George Miller. You did great job 
You know, uh, the movie is amazing. It was a hit with nearly everybody. Oh, yeah. um, it was great for women's rights and females kind of uh, empowerment. Um, I know a lot of females that went to the movie and they freaking loved it. They, and, as, and as did I. But uh, I think this is just a good way of saying, George Miller, you're not going to win Best Picture. You're not going to win Best Director. But you're going to have all yeah. these other awards yeah. to hang your cap on. Yeah. Well, uh, Eric, there were some in-memoriam snubs in this year's Oscars. Tell, tell us about it. Well, the biggest one was Abe Vigoda. Um, Abe Vigoda, as you know, he did play an iconic role there in The Godfather. And then for Abe Vigoda, for me, he was just kind of an obscurity, like in, in as far as TV roles go. Um, Abe Vigoda would just show up, and uh, he was kind of like the, the, the funny grandpa that would just kind of be wandering about. Um, I know on Conan, um, Late Night with Conan O'Brien, he would always show up and uh, if Rickman, if Alan Rickman is getting it, and I get it that he, was, he had that iconic role as Professor Snape in Harry Potter and even uh, as uh, Hans Gruber in Die Hard, but Ava Gutt has been around for so long, did so much for TV, did so much for movies, um, and just been a name, in, uh, a name for film and cinema and TV that you would have thought, what, does he not count? There's plenty of other snubs as well, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break in our Oscars recap. Coming up next segment, we're going to look at how Chris Rock made an impact as host of the Oscars, as well as pick our winners and losers from the 88th Oscars. Stay tuned. Watch your Spanish news gets noticiero te met Friday at 10:30 a.m. Sports, entertainment, weather, events, all you need to know about our school, our region, and our world. On Comcast Channel 54 in Denver and Channel 20 on campus. Noticiero TV met the student's voice of MSU Denver in Spanish. We know going into the 88th Oscars that there was some controversy around the fact that there were no African American nominees in the field, and Eric, Chris Rock wasted no time addressing the elephant in the room. Yeah, uh, Chris Rock had, right off in his opening monologue, he just went for it, and I thought that was great. And he was even controversial bringing out Stacey Dash on stage, and uh, uh, a famous Clueless star, and, and well, Clueless, the movie, not a Clueless yeah. star. <laughs> well, in some in some round, in, in some circles, she is Clueless. But um, for me personally, I thought Chris Rock addressed the elephant in the room and actually brought in the elephant in the room. And I thought that was very brave on his part. Um, I thought Chris Rock was actually a perfect candidate for uh, hosting, even though it has been the lowest uh, rated Oscar. Yeah, right? we'll touch on that in a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, since John Stewart, so. Um, I, I thought his joy, jokes were poignant and, and on point, and I thought uh, that he did actually a, a marvelous job. I really loved the segment where he went around on the street asking other black people, have you seen these movies, Spotlight? And the best one was when he asked uh, this one guy, and he was like, um, have, do you know who Tom Hanks is? Yes. Do you know who Steven Spielberg is? Yes. Oh, they released a movie? Yeah, it's called Bridge of Spies. Ever heard of it? Nope. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. What are your thoughts on it, Brandon? I haven't seen it yet. Um, okay. I didn't watch the Oscars, so 
Um, oh I mean, we had God. it on a second TV. He we watched have it, sound people. On. He watched it. <laughs> well, to a good I, portion. He I saw pieces the, of it. Well, I watched the end of it. Okay. Um, Which, so I, I yeah. pretty much the important stuff. I didn't watch any of the concert the crap pageantry or, or any of that, that stuff. Yeah. I mean, we had it on a on a TV, just kind of in the background with no sound, <laughs> okay. um, so that we didn't have to hear all that <laughs> bad stuff. But um, we did watch the end uh, for best picture, best actor. Um, I think that's all we saw, actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, other than that, I haven't gone to, I, I'm planning on going to YouTube and just watching okay. Chris Rock um, and what he did. Because I, I mean, I heard Twitter blew up. I mean, I, yeah. it was funny. I, I rewatched the monologue last night. Um, I thought a good portion of it was, was pretty good. Yeah. Um, there were, when he, I'm not going to say the words, but there were a couple of times when he mentioned some things about how um, there in the past there's been a lot more worse things that African Americans have had to deal with. Yeah. Just bring out those words. I, I think, and granted, while true, mm -hmm. uh, obviously there has been tough times yeah. uh, throughout throughout the history for African Americans, but to bring out those words, I, I think it was just a little bit uncomfortable um, for for everyone, not just yeah. for Caucasians or African Americans or whoever. I just I just think bringing those words into a monologue in a situation like that, for me personally, I think was just a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, for kind of everyone involved. Yeah. Um, but other than that, a lot a lot of it got he made, he made some good points. He kind of he kind of brought up um, you know obviously throughout the history of the Oscars and as you mentioned, got right into it with yeah. the monologue and. A lot of it was good. I just think a couple, just a couple minor things. Like well, I think it was a little bit touchy yeah. subjects. I didn't like him bringing on Stacey Dash. I thought, even though like it was just kind of like, oh, he did it kind of thing. That was the great part about it. Is that, oh, he brought her on. But yeah. then I thought it was kind of the context surrounding it was like, ooh, that's not the greatest. You know, it's kind of in some poor taste. And I also thought, as an as a, as an Asian person myself, is that when he brought out the little Asian children. I think that joke really missed on some people, and it's also too. It's a. It, it was. Uh, I know it was for a joke's sake, and I got it, and it was fine. But uh, still belittling that. You know, it's not just um, uh, African Americans or Black people. It's it's people of all colors that aren't properly represented sure. um, in in the Oscars, even as just uh, hosts or presenters. I don't think that's their properly represented um, and they have been making changes to the Academy Awards or the Academy itself is that um, they are allowing more uh, people of color to be uh, a part of that Academy so no one one of the other things I think was great throughout the Oscars and with involved with Chris uh, Chris Rock hosting was the part where the, the movies that were I think they only did the ones that were best picture when they put in an African-American in the lead role <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that was that was pretty good especially the one with um, uh, Tracy Morgan, when they put him in the yeah. Danish girl, yeah. he's like, he says, I forget what he said, but he just had, he had a Danish right there, yeah. and it was, it was hilarious. Um, I think they had um, the girl from, I believe, is it Orange of the New Black or something? No, she's from SNL. They put her mm -hmm. in, in a role. I forget which one it was. I'll have to rewatch that part, yeah. but that, that was pretty funny. That yeah, was pretty and funny. speaking of SNL, I thought they actually, um, with the whole Oscars so white controversy, I thought they approached it. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen that skit where it's like the white cameramen that get are getting all the awards instead of um, uh, Idris Elba from Beast of No Nation. Yeah. Um, yeah. More on that. I thought he, you know, Michael B. Jordan should have gotten probably a nomination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it that he's young and it's but and it was a Creed. It was a sports movie esque, but. God, I thought he did a great job. Um, even though he was kind of a little bit overshadowed by Sylvester Stallone um, as a supporting actor, but I thought both him and Elba would have at yeah. least gotten some nominations. And I saw Concussion as well as uh, uh, so Will Smith as Dr. Bennett Omalu. I thought he was great, but um, it didn't look good PR-wise when Jada Pinkett Smith was kind of fighting on her husband's behalf after the yeah. snub. So. Okay, All right, let's move on. Well, as you mentioned, Eric, uh, the Oscars hit a dip in the ratings this year. According to Hollywood Reporter, the Oscars dropped to a near all-time low with 34.3 million viewers, the second lowest ever, second to the 2008 Oscars, hosted by Jon Stewart. Thoughts on the dip and thoughts on the second lowest ever? Not surprised, honestly. I mean, this doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I think a lot of people were doing their own personal boycotting of just not watching it. Um, How long was it? Huh? How long it was, was like it? three hours. Yeah, it was oh, it's also an hour. three hours too. Short and to an hour. The pageantry too is where. Because it's like how do you short it to an hour? Because well, all the all of get the, up, say the awards. Get up, get yeah, down. Get up, get, get down. Just do the. <laughs> what's the show about? The giving out these awards, not having, you know, everyone sing. 
I, and yeah, how do these, that's the part how do I always like. Or anything but like Lady that? Gaga's performance was huge. The one I didn't get sure, to see. Yeah. I got to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. But at the same time, is. you don't need to do that at a movie award show. <laughs> it's not a music award show. It's a movie award show. Well, I think that's what an hour to, or an hour and a half. I think one happen. night. I, I don't think the three hour maybe is the is the big reason. Excuse me to the to the viewership. I think it is. You the, think it is? Yeah. It's well, way but too the long. the viewer membership. I'm assuming even if you chime in for a little bit, that, that I think it counts to the numbers. So that can't be too big. I think people chime in for a little bit. I mean, I gotta say that probably the highest spike is right before Best Actor came up, and everyone knows yeah. it's at the end. Mm -hmm. So when's everyone gonna tune in? Probably near the end. Yeah. I think that accounts to the viewership anyway. So it's gotta be something. But it else. was late too. Mm -hmm. It was starting. Started, I think at 6:30. Well, yeah, right. But by, by the time, it, by the time it got to yeah. the stuff that you actually cared about, that's true. It was 9:30 so or 10. So by the time you get something to care about, it's near the end. People are going yeah. to sleep. And, and at well, East Coast, it's also, midnight. East Coast. Also, yeah, it's true. competing I mean, with uh, a lot of great Sunday night programming. I'm Walking sure you Dead. watched The Walking yes. Dead. We were watching The Walking Dead instead of we didn't. We had it on the TV. We were watching Walking Dead. By the time Walking Dead was over, mm -hmm. then we were able to kind of look over, okay, well, even just how about actor. sports fans? I mean, Steph Curry in, against the OKC had an amazing game. Yeah. Was that Sunday? Wasn't uh, that Sunday night? That was night? the night before. No, yeah, that was, was that Monday night? Before. That was Saturday, I think. Was it Saturday? Yeah. yeah. Saturday. Well, either way. Um, the highlights Sunday, of it still, the Warriors. But <laughs> Sunday but Sunday night, too, it's like yeah. um, everybody should be tuning yeah. in. It is primetime television, but it is competing with great shows. Um, and us being kind of, you know, TV and film both yeah. fanatics is that we – we I, like watching. I think people I, are going to tune in at least to see how they would have addressed the well, controversy. Well, yeah, but you can watch it on YouTube. You can find out on Twitter or Facebook. That's There's true. other ways to find out. You don't need to watch it in order to... All, all you care about is, okay, who won Best Actor? Who won... Uh, Best picture. Yeah, and there's That's literally all you care about. There's and literally maybe feeds. The yeah, and there's literally feeds. You can see it highlights automatically the second they win. Right. And so yeah. Or they say they thank everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can see like the speech. For, the speech. The speech from Leo is probably up online like five within five minutes yeah. anyway. I watched it on YouTube about five minutes later because yeah. we didn't have the sound on. So we, I just, I went straight to Facebook and I found it in about four or five minutes from from the time that it had actually gone live. So. There's other ways to view it, shorten it. You don't need all of the, the other crap and make it earlier. If it goes from, when did, when did the red carpet start? Did, did oh, that start God. at 6.30? I don't even know. That was way before, right? Three, Three in the afternoon. So, no, you're, I mean, you, really? I don't you say that obnoxiously, but I, I think it, <laughs> it was pretty close to three it started afternoon. at like four three or four. Or four. Yeah, yeah. But Let's, actually yeah. have the, the event itself go for an hour. That's all you need. Because if you, if you cut out if everything from that three hours, and you just have the awards. I bet you it was right around 45 minutes. Yeah. All right, let's get to our winners and losers. Let's just kind of start going down the list, and then kind of winners and losers kind of come from that. Yeah, but um, best picture, going to Spotlight. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but what are um, your guys' thoughts on Spotlight oh, taking I, it? Uh, I saw it was amazing. Um, also, too, is that you got to understand the Academy list. And when it's up against um, The Big Short, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, Mad Max Fury Road, The Martian Room, um, and The Revenant, um, yes, Revenant was amazing, highly stylistic, but um, as with most, it's the, how do you avoid an issue like that? And I thought um, Spotlight, very um, appropriate for uh, winning Best Picture. It was a great ensemble cast. Nobody kind of overshadowed anybody, even though both Mark Ruffalo and uh, um, Rachel McAdams were nominated. I thought that it was a strong ensemble cast. They presented a great story. It was a good overall movie. Um, and I thought I was deserving of the win. Now, I don't think they say who like came in certain place, do they? Do they do you, or who do you guys think was by <laughs> the... second place? Yeah, yeah. Do you, no, no, yeah, they don't clearly give it up, but who do you think if they were to say, here's first through I whatever? I kind did. Um, I kind of do, too. Awesome. Like a, who like do you, a who silver, do you, golden, uh, or I, silver? My yeah. assumption is I don't think they do, so if you if they did, who do you think was number two behind that? What, do you think it was right there with Revenant? I think it was where, with Revenant, yeah, and they just didn't want to give out back-to-back -back awards to Inari 2 Because then, then you probably got it. If you yeah. if you go best movie, that means you got to go, got really consider Inari 2 for best director, which obviously... Which he already won. Yeah. And he did go back-to-back, -back, which was unprecedented. Yeah. You just don't see that. Um, and good for... Uh, um, God, why am I spacing his name right now? But he, he was in both Birdman and The Revenant. Oh, um, or, Birdman Michael Keaton. and Spotlight. Michael yeah, Keaton. Michael Keaton. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was amazing. Keaton stepping up big time recently. There's, yeah, recent years, yeah. Landing some big roles in some big films. So, yeah. uh, both of his pictures that he appeared in won Best Picture. Uh, wasn't nominated this time around. Was nominated last year for Best Actor. Um, but, yeah. Best Actress going to Brie Larson, The Room. Not surprised. 
really not surprised. Um, I thought Kate Blanchett and Jennifer Lawrence, they were both uh, phenomenal actresses, but they've already won, and uh, it's both Joy and Carol weren't their best performances. Yeah. So um, I thought it was definitely between um, Sergio Ronan and uh, a new face, Brie Larson. And from what I've watched, I'm going to have to, from what I've heard, I'm going to have to oh, hear yeah. a room now. And uh, she will be also in 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was. Um, been promoted like crazy. As yeah. of late, so. so we got in touch on director real quickly. Director in Ritu going back to back. Uh, which one was better, Bird and Birdman or Revenant? I enjoyed Birdman a lot more. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me. I, I Revenant like, I like was highly stylistic. I liked it, but yeah, Bird. Bur, yeah, Bur, I, I think I'm gonna have to go with probably with Birdman. Is I think I like Revenant more as a movie, but in terms of what it took to direct, well, that's actually really tough. I think it's it's split yeah, down the middle. More I think about it, the directing job that he did with Revenant, but knowing how how he directed with Birdman, that's. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Those are two dang good movies to go back yeah, to back with. Exactly. So props what do you to him think? for sure. I didn't see The Revenant, so what I, about, mean, I don't have much have to say. Have you seen Birdman? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great movie, but um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, he certainly deserved it last year. I don't know if he deserved it this year. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen The Revenant. So yeah. um, I, I was surprised that um, he, kind of, he won it, though, because I... Like you said, you don't usually win back to back. No, not for directing. Yeah. So, so. that was that was surprising. That was huge. Um, and even though I thought, you know, George Miller was definitely deserving. Um, yeah. It was it was in Rito all the way. All right, we're running out of time, so let's go through these uh, best original song. You might touch on this with Sam Smith winning it. A lot of people obviously a little happy Christmas with him. Song. Why? Well, it's the crappiest Bond song yet. That's why. Case in point. Um, and also, too, is a, a lot of people don't like Sam Smith in general. Yeah. But it, it goes the best song. And it wasn't just, you can't just attribute it to just Sam Smith. It was, uh, uh, was it Jimmy Napes as well? So um, on that, uh, collaborating on that song. So yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm also tired of seeing Bond songs win. I'm kind of wanting to get Bond to get back on top because it's. Yeah, Spectre. See, I, and I didn't see, I didn't, and, and so I didn't see Spectre, and yeah. so I obviously I'm yeah, talking. Me I got too. it. Okay, all right. <laughs> Best supporting actor, Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spy. Surprise there because you thought it was going to go to uh, Stallone. That was huge. Yeah, I think everybody and their mother was picking Stallone just based off a of name alone. The Academy loves Stallone, yeah. but uh, he also turned in an amazing performance. I actually thought his performance outshadowed Michael B. Jordan's, um, and that has nothing to do with race, too. I thought he was just better in that movie. Um, more gravitating, but um, Mark Rylance in Bridge of Spies was amazing. Um, very few lines, um, but that's also kind of the Leonardo DiCaprio effect. We could, uh, and there's some parallels there. What do you think, Brandon? Um, yeah, I was surprised that Sloan didn't win. Um, but again, uh, Creed was the only movie I saw out of that group, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I don't have the list in front of me, but um, that was one of two or three movies that I, I'd only seen in that. So. I, it was easy for me to pick Stallone just because I, you know, that was one of the few that I saw. But he was great, so I was, like you said, and, and his popularity and everything, yeah. I, was, I was really surprised that he didn't win. Very quickly, Mark sure. Ruffalo only had, uh, well, I thought he was great in Spotlight, but there was one pivotal scene that actually previewed in the Oscars, or yeah, at the, or in the Academy Awards, um, it was the same thing, but they previewed it when, before you know, they announced Mark Ruffalo, and that was the scene that probably earned him the nomination. Okay. We're running out of time, so one big surprise or one thing that you caught you off guard with the Oscars, one thing real quick. I didn't, um, I didn't like the Asian children being up okay. there. I thought that was a bit of a surprise, but as far as uh, who won, I, um, I was, yeah, I was surprised by Mark Rylance. I thought that okay. was crazy. I mean, the Leo thing, I think, because it sounds like it was leaning, yeah. that the argument was leaning towards Fassbender, so I am mean, surprised with that, but. Yeah, huh. that, that's what okay. I'm surprised most about is Leo did win, and I'm happy for him that he did win, but like I said earlier, it felt yeah. like you're giving someone a lifetime award instead yeah. of yeah. an yeah. award for well, what it was for. Sure. Um, so standing ovation from everybody. Yeah, and, and that was great. His speech was great and all that, but uh, it didn't feel it didn't feel as good, at least for for a viewer, mm -hmm. as it would have if it was for a movie that he deserved a little bit more. Yeah, he yeah. deserved it, but there was others that deserved a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. That was it. Right. Well, that'll do it for our Oscars recap. Thanks so much for tuning in into Footage Fanatics.